Really sad news, director Wes Craven died of brain cancer, of all horrible things, at 76 years old. Uh, real sad. I, the man was a legend. I mean, if you're a horror film fan like I am, he took the slasher film and made it an art form. Absolutely an art form. Uh, even in the early days, he just had an eye and a style that was just undeniable. And he just redefined the 80s. And then, you know, just with Scream and with uh, just so many incredible films that he had. And uh, I was lucky enough to meet Wes, Wes Craven twice. Uh, once for Red Eye and um, what was the other one? Oh, geez, I'm going blank. Uh, one of the Scream films. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, when you've been doing this 20 years, you just, you never would think that you're going to forget things, you know, because you just see so many movies and so many people. And, uh, but he was really gracious. I remember he was really funny. And uh, I have the interview somewhere. I have 20 years of interviews in my garage. They're all on beta tape. And I have to transfer them over, digitize them, and, and post them on YouTube. So I'm getting there. But I have Wes Cra Craven's interview out there. And uh, I remember he signed, I had a laser disc of uh, Wes Craven's New Nightmare, and he signed that for me. So he was just really nice. It's just so sad because he was such a nice guy and was such a legend. Um, so I thought I would tell you that my favorite five films from Wes, Wes Craven, and uh, these are probably kind of off the radar, and, uh, but, uh, you know, check them out. All right, coming at number five, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, Dream Warriors. This is the one that was in 3D. And uh, this one was my favorite because they're in that kind of asylum and kind of that, that medical hospital. And uh, Freddy's like in, in their nightmares, but you have like a gamer, like a wizard. Because I was a, that one kid who was like trying to do like a, a magic user because we played Dungeons and Dragons a lot. And what year was that? That was 1987. And uh, so we played D&D a lot. So we love uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 when the kid was like the wizard. And also he does the whole marionette thing. So I just thought that was one of the coolest ones that I remember seeing of all the Nightmare on Elm Street movies was Dream Warriors. Coming at number four is Red Eye 2005. Uh, I love airplane movies, meaning, you know, disaster films and anything like that. So anytime you're trapped on a plane like Turbulence or Airport or any of the airport films, I just love those kind of movies. So to have uh, Killian Murphy as a terrorist and Rachel McAdams stuck on this plane on this Red Eye flight. I took a lot of Red Eye flights to New York to do interviews, you know, because I'm in Las Vegas. So I would always take the Red Eye because I wanted to be in New York early instead of getting five o'clock traffic if you go during, you know, the regular hours. So I thought Red Eye was a really exceptional thriller and one of Wes Craven's best films. Coming at number three, 1989, is Shocker with Mitch Pileggi. He went on to be the FBI director later on in The X-Files. Uh, he's a, uh, a convict who's uh, put in the electric chair and his ghost gets out and keeps killing. Such a crazy premise. It's got uh, rock and roll. It's got lots of crazy, stupid jokes. It's got a lot of gore in it. And I just think that's what just says about what Wes Craven is that he is just, he laughs at himself, but he also gives you thrills. He also gives you slasher stuff. So I thought Shocker was really cool. I think they wanted to do a franchise with that, but it never took off. But it was still one of his big successes in the 1980s. All right, coming at number two from 1991, People Under the Stairs. This is one of the most original horror films. It has such great mood and great style to it. You have this haunted house, this house, well not haunted, but you have this house on the block where all the kids knew something weird was going on there. And uh, you have this little kid uh, named, oh my gosh, what was his name? I'm going blank. Uh, I forgot the character's name. All right, don't get mad at me. I'm going, is it Boo? Not Boo, that's, that's uh, what do they call it? That's, <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, I'm so fried right now. What in the world was that kid's name? I'm going to go find out. i got to go to the internet. I should have known his name. Fool. That's what it was. Fool. The little kid, uh, Adams, he was uh, always uh, impersonated Michael Jackson. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Anyway, People Under the Stairs, uh, Ving Rhames, one of his early films, Everett McGill, who plays the, the psycho that lives inside the house, and uh, uh, he's great. He's in um, uh, Under Siege 2, Dark Territory. I love that. Pepper spray you know, for civilians. And, and, and People Under the Stairs has... Uh, one of my favorite lines, uh, uh, the, well, the, the mother's like, she's been feeding that thing in the walls. I mean, it's just, it's so creepy. And it's also got humor. It's got Wes Craven's fingerprints all over it. But the people under the stairs, I used to watch that regularly. I have it on Laserdisc, in fact. I don't think it's on DVD. Of course it's on DVD. It must be. But I have it on Laserdisc somewhere. That's such a great film. I'm going to watch, I mean, I'm going to have a really good Halloween this year. Too bad it's at Wes Craven's expense. Uh, it's so sad. All right, my number one, you ready for my number one film by Wes Craven? It's been a long day. I, I must. I've seen all disheveled. I just saw a walk in the woods. That was terrible, and I just had a long day. But I wanted to get this eulogy out to Wes Craven because he was such a legend, and he deserves this. Uh, but my favorite film by Wes Craven from 1982. I believe it's 1982. 
I make sure I'm not cheating. It's 1982. It's Swamp Thing. And uh, people are going to think I was going to say Scream or Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, those are all great. But you know what? When I saw Swamp Thing, I was 15 years old, and uh, I was a comic book fan. So I have all the Swamp Thing. I have all the Bernie Wrightson uh, Swamp Thing DC comics. And yes, it's campy. Yes, it's corny. Do not bring your evil here. But it was just so well done. This was before comic book movies were what they were today. It was back then when he punches that rowboat and that special effect in the swan and Adrian Barbeau, you know, she's... Uh, it's just such an amazing film when he's got his arm cut off and Swamp Thing puts his hand up to uh, get the sunlight and grow a new arm. It's just a great film. It really is. And it's really creepy, too, at times. But very campy. But Swamp Thing is just my favorite Wes Craven film. And, uh, again, I have it on Laserdisc. Is it on DVD? It has to be on DVD. Anyway, I need to get my Wes Craven collection up. I've got all the Nightmare films, I've got all the Scream films, and yada yada yada, but you know, those are those early films, those are really what define, I think, Wes Craven. Alright, a sad day, Wes Craven, thank you so much for all the great thrills and chills that you gave us over the years, and thank God we have film and DVD and home video, everything, so we can keep enjoying your films for many, many years and for next generations. Alright, for more reviews and interviews, surf on over to my website at VegasFilmCritic.com, podcast at iTunes, and if you like what you see, please subscribe, comment, share, and thumbs up. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time, YouTube. I'm Jeffrey K. Howard.